Now, okay, like I said about certain issues, like, all right, since Ruth died or passed away, or went into the hereafter, mm -hmm. whether she went to the Jewish paradise, the Christian paradise, <laughs> or the hell, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> The place of torment in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to judge her that right. Whatever she did, she did for her own reasons. And she lived the best life she could based on her traditions as well. Mm -hmm. Well, now you got another woman. I don't know. And the president can nominate <laughs> the replacement <laughs> as long as he's what? Still in office. Still in office. <laughs> You can't act like that's not something he can do <laughs> when it is when it is. Or you're going nutball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the problem too, right? Now, even if it's someone who's Catholic or whatever, I can't do nothing about that. Mm -hmm. But Amy Coney Barrett, mm -hmm, don't know nothing about her, <laughs> is the nominee. Uh, yes. <laughs> He's expected to nominate her. <laughs> According to CBS even news tonight. Well, all the news companies, right? They're all talking about it. <laughs> so I am too, right? Since I'm current, right? Trying to deal with all the same shit you're dealing with but differently. <laughs> as you're dealing with it differently than I am. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> so that's the point, right? <laughs> that's where we're at in all this. Now, my life is different than, say, my ex-wife's life and the people she's around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people I'm around are trying to fuck me, too, so I'm trying to get away from them. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm just waiting for a girl to commit to at least sex <laughs> before marriage, if nothing else. <laughs> and see, Moses is different than Paul <laughs> when it comes to that. <laughs> um... Paul wants you to more keep your virgin, even if she don't marry type man. <laughs> Sounds like. Sounds like. And Moses, on the other hand, is kind of like, well, if she is enticed and they with a man, he just kind of go to the father, ask her hand in marriage, and if he refuses, pay her virgin dowry one time. <laughs> and that's all you can do about it, right? And then, you know, if he's that much of a god to his daughter, I guess, they don't marry. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what all that means. That's antiquity, you know. Back then, guess who was the head of the household? Daddy. Daddy. Sometimes even daddy dearest. Um, yeah, yeah. But he determined who his daughter married, like in the song Rude. I know you're an old-fashioned man, but why you gotta be so rude? Right, right. Well, guess what? We ain't got to do all that now. There's something called the age of consent, fathers, where you can your 16-year-old daughter can have sex with a man 50 years old, by the way, <laughs> if she consents, which means she gives the man permission to have sex with her. Mm -hmm. And usually, I know, there ain't nothing you can do about it if it's just sex, even if she gets pregnant, right? Though, like I said, in most cases, right, 16 year olds don't date 50 year olds right <laughs> usually not saying it can't happen either either but like I said I don't you know date anybody right now not since Molly Z now we had kind of a two week fling <laughs> whatever you want to call it and then the second two week fling but it involved taking her around Georgia showing her where I grew up <laughs> things like that right <laughs> Exactly. How I would treat any female I met suddenly who didn't really know me <laughs> and show her where I grew up. <laughs> like a stranger in my house, right? <laughs> but not cheating on me or anything, I guess, right? I don't know what's going on, right? <clears throat> but I'm trying to get to know someone who's acting like they want to help me, but then when all was said and done, she really didn't, right? <laughs> <clears throat> See, she's half listening, half not anyway, I know. See, another problem I have is I had a dream where I stood before a throne with a bright light shining from it as if in the cloud, right? Well, even I can associate that with the Bible. <laughs> Without much uh, here to thought to for <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. 
Well, like I said, when I was reading through the Bible, I read about the two witnesses. These are two olive trees that you can't say the same for God of the earth. And see, God is the God of what two realms? Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Well, what does the Bible say about heaven <laughs> and earth? Heaven is as strong and the earth is so, so right, right. Well, what's the difference? Well, one's you're, you're sitting on the throne and one, your feet are resting on the footstool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's another possibility. <laughs> if a female was to have a dream of what dream she might have and see, <laughs> maybe she would just see a big feet on the footstool on in a garden somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> it's a guess. It's a guess. <laughs> or just a footstool on the earth in a garden. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But it's a possibility, I guess. <laughs> now, maybe she would hear a voice telling her in the dream she's one of the two witnesses because, like me, you know, this ain't something common. Right? I guess everybody dreams. I mean, I heard of a lot of people who told me they also saw the thunder of the head, right? <laughs> That's something I'm trying to look for, too. Someone to tell me they had a similar dream or something. Right? <laughs> maybe we can talk about it amongst ourselves or something, right? As friends, of course, not if it's another male, I would do anything more. I'm not into all that. Since I grew up in the South, right? Now, it's like you, if you're growing up somewhere else and they're telling you you can do something, and I'm growing up somewhere else where they're telling us we can't, I'm not going to argue with the people around me and try and do something they tell me not to do. <laughs> Usually that gets you in trouble <laughs> with everybody around you. <laughs> so you try not to do it. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> you don't want to step on anybody's toes or anything. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I'm also told to try and wait for marriage growing up, right? So I tried that until I joined the Navy, and then I just kind of had a couple weird incidences amongst in the church I was going out to. <laughs> and my shipmates trying to quid pro quo me, it seems, <laughs> And not wanting to train me as an electrician on my ship. <laughs> Which, like I said, where else can I learn to be a Navy electrician except on a Navy ship when I get there, right? <laughs> well, I don't know shit about working on the ship. <laughs> I'm sure I said that right. <laughs> shit and ship. <clears throat> that was the problem with them, I know. See, someone was supposed to train me there and no one bothered <laughs> Because no one cared. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. The reason they're doing all this is they don't think anyone would care. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm telling my story on YouTube. I'm not trying to make it a big deal. I didn't even know it was quid pro quo until I went to school. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> I just said no. <laughs> What well, I was taught in Georgia, too, if anyone makes that offer, you just say no and walk away. <laughs> Don't even think twice. <laughs> Don't think twice. Right. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I wouldn't even tip, did you know what I mean? <laughs> as soon as he asked, I said no. <laughs> no. No. Three times, right? But now that I'm thinking about the movie Highlander, <laughs> where the officer is calling the Highlander gay, I'm th starting to see some sim similarities there. <laughs> Unfortunately, too, right? <laughs> Now, I'm not trying to bust the guy who did it out. <laughs> <clears throat> and he still can't make me feel what I don't feel either. <laughs> it still would end up the same. <laughs> if it was to happen again, too, right? I would still say no, right? Now, the problem is, though, that's not how you're supposed to do that type of work. Because <laughs> it involves equipment they're supposed to show me how to work on on the ship. <laughs> which you can only learn to work on on the ship. And if I don't know what to do, I just could go to the place and they only give me the work card and try to do the job. <laughs> and then I don't know what I'm doing. The whole time on the shit. <laughs> right, and that's kind of frustrating, but you kind of got to deal with it. <laughs> now, I used to weigh around 150 to 170 pounds between that time, right? Which is about 10 pounds lower and 10 pounds higher than my average weight of 160. Okay. I also did martial arts from 13 to 17 for about four years. Got up the blue belt, which is close to brown, but I was in a car wreck around 
time I was supposed to be tested and stuff like that too, though. Again, I worked all that out now, recently. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm. Now, I got my little dummies here and there, and I got my speed bag I use once in a while. and <laughs> Might see if I can, you know, get it going again. <laughs> and I can, you know, throw my bags around a little bit, my dummies. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's all I can do right now. All right. Now, I can't do it the same either. Either. Now, before I fell, I was doing it after work nonstop. So, I work, say, um, <clears throat> at Roger Wood. Right? Come home. Walk. Right. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Exercise. Right. Until I went to bed. Watch TV a little bit. Round eight. Right. Go to bed around 11, try to get up, do it again. Go back, Jack, do it again. We'll turn them round and round. You go back, Jack, do it again. A little musical intro. Ah. <laughs> no. Alright, I remember that song going up, listening to it on the radio. I forgot who sung it <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> right now, I'm working on You Don't Own Me. Right, I kind of like that song right now. <laughs> you don't own me. I'm, a, I'm not your little toy. You don't own me. I know, right? Kind of listen to that right now. <laughs> Just started, though. I'm not really familiar with the song yet, but I've heard it before. It sounds familiar. <clears throat> I think her name is Leslie Gore or something. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, I was kind of liking that song. Right. <clears throat> Anyway, anyway, so <laughs> um, that's what I learned to do growing up. I started listening to the radio and trying to match the singers on the radio, right? Not really thinking about it being a big deal, right? Even with copyright law, because you could do it education-wise. That's what they taught me in school growing up. So, right, even music on the radio could be taught because it's educational stuff, right? If you make it educational, it's not against copyright. Infringement causes fair use that night. Because you're not taking credit for the material. You're giving the credit to the artist or the person doing the song. And you acknowledge that by saying you heard it on the radio. Anyway. And that kind of is the point of that. So I'm using it as a reference to how I'm feeling right now as well. Which I'm sure when Leslie sung the song. Which gives her credit for whatever part she played. And even though she just sung it as off a record label. Right. And that's all I got to do under for fair use, right? <laughs> yeah. To do that, right? And have a point to using her lyrics, too, right? As part of my own, you know, how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> myself, myself. <laughs> Which, again, that's the point about freedom of speech, right? And usually, like I said, what I was taught with book reports and music, Sometimes we would play a popular song, right? And we would learn to play it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we played songs we didn't even know. <laughs> like one song was called Soon I Will Be Done With The Sun, so, uh, Trouble Of The World, which I sung for you before. But it's supposed to be an African spiritual. But um, it's kind of sung by a choir and kind of a mixed choir right? of white and black students, right? Too. But basically, he sang it this way. Soon the will be done with the troubles of the world, troubles of the world, troubles of the world. The world. Soon the will be done with the troubles of the world. God help to be with God. No more. We've been at a well and no more. We've been at a well and no more. We've been at a well and God to live with God. That's basically how he sung it. <laughs> I don't know if you know that good, bad, whatever. <laughs> That's what I remember when I was seeing that sound. People in my choir <laughs> is who you would have to reference if they think I sung it how we sung it. <laughs> if you know them. <laughs> if you know them. Right. <laughs> and I ain't seen them in years. I ain't even, I couldn't even really graduate effing him or Groves. <laughs> perhaps in part due to the direct, perhaps 
in part due to I started having mild sleeping problems and things like that in class and school. <laughs> but nothing that I couldn't kind of try and work through either. And when I was working at Roger Wood, I was kind of keeping the schedule right <laughs> for a few months. And uh, I also tried working at the Crispy Chick while doing that job. Right? So I was holding out at least two jobs right before I joined. Anyway, right, and then I had to quit those jobs because I joined the military, and by um, February of 1990, I was in the military, and I was 20 years old, so I went through all the basic training, A school, did real well my first year, right, <laughs> which that's what that takes up, <laughs> got 3.8 grade um, averages, right, work averages, right, but then I get to the shit. Okay, my first month, I'm kind of worked free because I don't really know what I'm doing yet. Then they send me to kitchen duty or galley duty, which that's what they call this kitchen in the Navy, which is the galley. So again, I did that for three months. Did okay in it. Still good. Still good. Still my first year. Still 3.8 evals. So guess what happens? I get to my division. I start hearing rumors about the church I'm going out to being on 2020. We're told not to watch it and all kind of crazy stuff like that. So I tell my family, don't watch your show, man. <laughs> and you know they're going to watch it as soon as you tell them that. <laughs> they're your family. They're your family. And they might not, you know, be afraid you're part of a cult and you don't even know you're in a cult because that's how a cult works. <laughs> they don't come out and say, hey, I'm a cult. Want to join? <laughs> Ask Jim Jones followers. Ask right. <laughs> Jim Baker followers even. They don't know he was hanky panking with the secretary. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever Jessica Hahn was. <laughs> but again, right? right. <clears throat> you shouldn't have to worry if a pastor invites you to a motel room or not, right? With someone else. You're not trying to do anything there with him, but if you show up and you kind of have memory problems of what happened, right, and you feel you were violated, well, that sounds like Ruthie's to me, or some kind of drug to incapacitate the woman, like I watch on SVU a lot, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> That's another reason why I relate to that, right? So, a lot, right? So, I'm learning all this growing up, too, right? So, I'm learning about watching Ricky Lake, different stuff, and Oprah and Dr. Phil and sometimes uh, Jerry Springer and also um, <clears throat> different shows like um, Hercules, Xena, right? Things like that, you know, during the different shows, uh, Law and Order, right? Um, I didn't really get into Friends because that was just not quite my taste, but... <laughs> Uh, I've seen some episodes here and there. Right? Or, um... Because <clears throat> that's like New York life, right? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Just didn't get it, right? But, again, so... Um... Like, I would watch more of the, um... Kind of fantastic shows, like Stingray. I don't know if you remember that show. It was about this guy who drove around in a Stingray Corvette. <laughs> And he would lift weights and all kind of stuff and try to solve crimes, right? <laughs> or, uh, like I said, The Master with Sh Shokasugi and Lee Van Cleef and Timothy Van Patten. It is enough sometimes, right? Right. Certain shows you watch, different shows, you know, all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Back to life, right? Even though it had girls in it. <laughs> Well, some boys are so kind of female-phobic, it, it seems, as well, growing up, right? And some boys were, like, kind of ganged together against you sometimes, right? Like I said, right? It all depends on the boys, But anyway, mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying you know me or you don't know me, but it's just a general reference, like I said, right? So the problem happened, though, when I got into the Navy. And, like I said, when you start going out to a church, you're just listening to what they're teaching you from the Bible at first. Right. 
But then they start trying to um, <clears throat> talk you into doing things and talk about being a eunuch or this, that, and the other. And you just kind of ask them about it. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> if I want to become a eunuch or something. And then they start talking about weird things. The pastor says it's okay to masturbate. Well, I didn't have a problem with that to begin with, but okay, thanks. <laughs> they also start, you know, talking about, well, if you're going to be a eunuch and you and a brother are alone sometimes, you might get lonely and, you know, if you, you know, do something to relieve that loneliness, it's okay. <laughs> That's when it started getting a little weird with the church. <laughs> but I'm trying not to say nothing, right? You, you don't know... <laughs> how sticky this is, right? Or if they're serious, right? Okay, but then, okay, you're at the apartments and you're about to take a shower and this guy tries to step into the shower with you and you just politely decline. Because right? I don't take showers with me. <laughs> I'm not down with that. I don't know. Even though I did it in the Navy, you know, this kind of felt too personal, right? <laughs> Two-man shower? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so I took my shower by myself. <laughs> all right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so again, <laughs> um, it goes on. And then one day I'm meeting the pastor. And uh, he comes over. He's we're by his office or something. I don't remember specifically when, where, or what to eat or anything like that. But he kind of hugs me one day and puts his arm between my butt cheeks. I'm wondering what is he up to, <laughs> so, and I kind of play it cool and I walk away. <laughs> right? The reason I walk away is I took karate and I knew I couldn't just hit him for that. Right? The reason is, right? It's assault in front of his office with no witnesses. Right? See, if someone does that and you have witnesses that he did that, you can report him usually too. Right? But even back then. Reporting someone for a sexual advance, even if it was a copper field, <laughs> which was what I like to call it. <laughs> he was trying to copper field. <laughs> Not in any reference to David Copperfield. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just kind of fit <laughs> the joke there. Right? So what I did was I froze up, didn't respond to him. And walked away when he finished the hug. Because, <laughs> see, he could only hug me so long, too. Or it gets even weird for him, right? So I just walked away. <laughs> Saw it happen, right? Between me and him, too. Mm -hmm. So I finish everything with A school. And I go to my ship. And like I said, that's where I started. I was supposed to start my training to work on the ship, right? But it never happened, right? Either, either. <laughs> and see, I don't know who I can trust. <laughs> Because the Lieutenant Glisbon knew something was kind of going on, but he couldn't really do nothing about it if he's an officer and there's an enlisted man. And I was didn't know if <laughs> I'm on the ship with these guys until I'm out. Right. I can't really go anywhere. <laughs> so you got to take it on the run, baby. You know, and use the gambler a lot. <laughs> you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right, right. So I tried to play that hand, right? Whatever hand they dealt me, not knowing what the hell I was doing the whole time, right? But taking whatever they gave me to do and trying to do it, right? But even with the work card, I could go to the workspace and look around and make sure nothing was out of place or everything looked okay. <laughs> I'll at least do that. Chief. Senior chief, whatever you were. Master chief, right? He was one of the three. And no, I don't think I'm special, but you got to train me. <laughs> and they weren't training me. <laughs> and I didn't know if, what they had told you about me either. Right? <laughs> Once you, you know, saw me trying <laughs> to go and do my job. Right? And you caught me as you were coming somewhere else. Because I, I was trying to go to the designated workspace to at least check out the area. <laughs> like I said. Mm -hmm. But I bet the first one to downplay me was either Ben or King. <laughs> Ain't that right, T? I don't even know if you're alive by now, but anyway. <laughs> I don't even remember half your names. Right. 
call C the th the third class petty officer or the F in F in all right. I don't know. Or the EMF in all right. The third um, rank is the one who's supposed to kind of train you so that he can get his E4. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And again, he when someone else new comes to the ship, you're supposed to help train them, right? So you can get your E4 and things like that, right? Well, I had no real progression, right? The whole time I'm on the ship, right? And again, I start... I had this problem in A school too, right? I start following the sleep on watch, and I had that look that neurologically and psychologically, which also helped me with the VA and the other things like that. Mm -hmm. But I was always taught to try and rehabilitate from any injury, in the, right? That's the problem too. <laughs> and I believe the Bible a little bit more than some people might, <laughs> especially where the guy's lowered in through the roof and. The, or the guy can't reach the pool when the angel stirs it to heal people. Mm -hmm. And part of the belief was the first one in the pool mm -hmm. would get healed. Mm -hmm. So he was on his bed near the pool. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus just did, like with the previous guys, told him to take up thy bed and walk, and it was the Sabbath day, and then the Jews got all the hoity toity on him. Because <laughs> you're not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath day, like the man picking up sticks. <laughs> And I guess they, you know, didn't want him doing anything at all. Which I think that's why the story's in there. Right? Looking back, right? Well, <clears throat> Moses is trying to teach you something about laws. Right? Some laws might sound okay, like even the Ten Commandments, you know. Which the last five have to do with the interactions between human beings, right? One is thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not murder, and thou shalt not covet. Those are the main ones anyway. Honor thy father and mother, things like that. Mm -hmm. These are about relationships between human beings and interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. The first five have to deal with if there's a God or not. And if there is a God, there's only one God, right? And you're not to worship any images of God because you don't know what it looks like. It just made us here, right? It made everything here, so you can't say it has a specific energy either. either. It might just be a spirit or a little ball of light on the throne. <laughs> might even just look like a star tea. <laughs> White dwarf. Red <laughs> dwarf. Right. I don't think there's such thing as a red dwarf, but there's a white dwarf, but I don't know. <laughs> And not referring to little people either, either. Though they were at one time called George. <laughs> right. So, and then I remember the song Short People <laughs> by the guy who also did some of the Toy Story music, right? Um, but I forgot his name. <laughs> but he, he did a little ditty called Short People. And I remember hearing it on the radio. Don't want no short people. Don't want no short people around here. And it just went, short people got nobody. I'm like, what? I, I kind of was wondering what he was trying to say. It kind of sounded negative. <laughs> but it was popular, right? <laughs> and he went on to do other stuff, too. Even some of the songs on Toy Story, right? <laughs> Toy Story. Mm -hmm. So things like that. Mm -hmm. Going up, right? <laughs> And, you know, all around, I think I was a normal guy going in, but came out a little messed up. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm trying to show here, right? <laughs> With all that. Mm -hmm. But, again, <laughs> it can happen to you. It can happen to me. It can happen to everyone eventually. <laughs> that's the little John Anderson there from, yes. I know. Right. And I kind of like most of the music I heard on the radio. I mean, I just learned to sing it, though. <laughs> now, I learned I could kind of basically impersonate everybody. <laughs> Not really thinking like her. I know. 
and watching the comedians on uh, SNL, right? So I'm thinking, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I can do all that. I can do all that. <laughs> Not having a problem with it. I um, don't really understand what they're saying about copyright law growing up anyway, right? Because I'm hearing two different sides of it. Fair use in, right? <laughs> Which involves words and lyrics. <laughs> or poems. <laughs> Even Edgar Allan Poe, the reason some of his poetry is in school in the first place is fair use. Is fair use. You know, you're to read some of his books and do book reports on them, which means you can quote references from the book, right? Well, that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm kind of quoting the artist who wrote the song, because some of the songs can be uplifting and inspirational, right? And some of the songs can be dun, dun, cheap. <laughs> kind of dirty, <laughs> Right. <laughs> now that I kind of understand what the song was saying. Now, when I was a kid, I'm just listening to it. Don't even give a damn. <laughs> Not even thinking about it. But the Christians do, and they're telling me all this stuff, right? They're kind of anti gay, right? But that's because if you read the Bible, it kind of appears anti gay, right? It don't want you being gay, right? It's kind of a reference there from Moses and Paul, mm -hmm. the two main writers of the Bible. Old and new, right? Now, you do have prophets, minor, in the Psalms and Proverbs of David and Solomon, right? Two of their major kings, right? And, um, Song of Solomon's Ecclesiastes. You have the Joshua Judges, Ruth, right? All that. And first and Samuel's when there's, first and second Samuel's when they're talking about getting the king over them, right? Which is a male, right? Well, the Lord's not wanting to do this because he's not a man. <laughs> okay. okay, do you understand what I'm trying to learn here? Who is this Lord? What is he? What exactly are they saying about him? Well, also during this time, I you know go through the ship and trying to get um, le learn the routines, but they're not teaching me anything, so I'm doing other stuff like cleaning the bathrooms, like I said, the head, right? And I'm not complaining, I'm just doing whatever work they give me, right? That I can actually do, right? And trying to stay out there here, right? Because obviously, they don't even want to train me. Right? And I'm just trying, right? <laughs> not knowing what the problem even is, right? Because, <laughs> see, if you think one way, and I don't even know what you're saying, being from the South, <laughs> I ain't going to think like you, you know? I'm going to know what you mean, you <laughs> know? And see, I won't say nothing to you because I know discretion is the better part of valor. <laughs> if you make a move and try to take a shower with me, I'll just politely decline and say, nah, you should take a shower by myself. Bye-bye. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> now, if I'm in a room full of Navy guys and we're in, you know, <laughs> boot camp,